Today I'm making pottery tools. Follow along with me as I make three useful pottery tools using natural materials. And at the end, I'll show you how to use two types of natural materials as pottery tools as they are with no extra work required. So all told, five DIY pottery tools that you can make yourself with natural materials. Let's get started. The first thing I need to do is collect some raw materials. Now I've already collected some yucca leaves and I have them soaking in a jar. So that's the first thing. The next thing I need is some thorns, some nice long thorns. Now you think living in a desert, there's a lot of thorns around, but I had to hunt high and low to find a mesquite tree that had long enough thorns for what I wanted to do. I thought about pulling the thorns off this choya, but those things are nasty, and once they get embedded in your flesh, they don't come out easily. Eventually, I found good thorns on this saguaro cactus as well, and so I ended up with the mesquite thorns and the saguaro thorns. The next thing I needed to collect were some good, well-seasoned sticks to use as handles. Now you don't want to just chop a piece of wood off a green tree because that wood can shrink quite a bit as it dries. What I wanted was something that was already pretty much dried and hard. So I found all this driftwood in Pantana Wash pushed up against a big mesquite. And all this wood seemed really good, nice and hard and well seasoned already. So I just found some that were about the right size to make handles out of. And I think I got some good wood here. So now I just need to take all these materials back to my studio and try putting them together. As a bonus, I also found these nice globs of amber mesquite sap, which make excellent binder for mineral paint. I collected these while I was out as well. The first thing I'm gonna do when I get back in my studio is cut those pieces of driftwood down into handle sized pieces. So I've got five good segments out of there and I've actually got more wood in case I want more. So the first tool that I'm gonna make is a paintbrush but not just a typical yucca paintbrush. I wanna make a big heavy brush that I can use for brushing on slip. So I've rotted down six or seven yucca leaves. They've been soaking in water for about a week and a half. And now I'm just using a spoon. You can use any blunt object to just kind of work the pulp and the skin off of these leaves. Get all that pulp out of there so the fibers are free. So I can use those as a brush. Once I've got all the pulp out, uh, I just have to kind of clean it up with my fingers and then those edge fibers are kind of thick, so I'll peel off those edge fibers and that's about it. So there's all the brushes I have. I'm gonna put these all together into one large brush. So now I wanna bind these all together. So I'm gonna cut off the stems entirely or the, you know, the non-rotted part of the leaf and I'm gonna tie them together with a piece of cotton twine. I've got them wet so the fibers are flexible and I'm wrapping this cotton string around it very, very tightly and then tie it off. Hopefully that'll hold those in place. Now that I've got these fibers all bundled together, I need to start working on a handle. So uh, this is that piece of driftwood that I collected down at Pantana Wash and it's cut to the right length. I wanna make sure that it's the right thickness that I'm gonna be able to drill a hole and put that inside of it. So then I get a bit of the right size and I just drill a hole into the end of the wood. And then just to make sure none of those fibers decide to pull out, I put a little bit of hot glue on the end, just to make sure that none of those fibers decide to slide out of there. And once that glue is dried, I can just press that down. It's a really nice snug fit into the handle. And then of course, just trim off those fibers a little bit so that it's a nice even brush. And that should be it. I'm excited to try using this. It's gonna be a great brush for applying slip. The next tool I'm gonna to make is a gourd rib tool. So I just use a carpenter's saw to just kind of score the gourd, and then I can just snap those bits off once they're scored. Get it into approximately the right shape and size that I'm looking for. And once I've got that piece of gourd in roughly the right size and shape, I use a rasp. This is just a common rasp. You can buy these at the hardware store. And I just use that to shape and to grind down the edges and corners into that kidney shape that I desire for that. So it doesn't take very long. It's pretty easy to do if you've got a nice, fresh, sharp rest. Now that I've got it all shaped, I'm gonna use the edge of that rasp to just peel out that pith on the inside of the gourd. So 
because that's not really going to help me make pottery. So I'll clean that all out, and now I'm ready to start sanding it. So first I'll sand the edges so that they're nice and smooth and even, so they don't leave an abraded surface on the pot when I'm working on it. And then I'll also sand the face of the gourd, because I want that to be relatively smooth, so again, it doesn't leave a coarse texture on the pottery as you're working. And that's all there is to it. Nice gourd rib. The third tool I'm gonna to make is a needle tool, a primitive needle tool, which is a pretty common clay working tool. So I'm just gonna cut the thorn off of this mesquite branch. And as you can see, I have more thorns in case I wanna make more later on. And I'm going to glue this into one of those handles to make a nice handy needle tool. I have two, remember I have the saguaro thorn and the mesquite thorn. So I need to make sure I have a drill bit that's just a little bit bigger than these thorns. So I load that drill bit into my drill and then carefully drill out that handle so that I can glue the thorn into that. And then I'm just using hot melt glue and putting a little on the handle and a little on the thorn and then just pushing it in there and kind of spinning it around, trying to get that glue distributed down into the hole and around, making sure that the thorn comes straight out of the handle. And that's the saguaro needle tool. And this will be the mesquite one. Same way, a little bit of hot melt glue on the thorn, on the handle, press it in, kind of turn it around and work it up and down so that you get the glue in there, done. So I think those are gonna be handy tools. Pretty easy to make too. I think these all came out really good. I've got the gourd rib, which is of course my standby for hand building primitive pottery. I've got a nice heavy slip brush for applying slip and I've got two needle tools. Now, let me show you those two other types of natural materials that make great pottery tools. The first one I'm gonna talk about is the polishing stone. Now I sell these on my website, but those are lapidary stones that have been tumbled through a mechanical process to make them smooth. But you can find natural stones that are smooth like this in the wild, depending on the geology where you live. My best place for collecting these is San Simone State Beach in Central California. There's a lot of really nice smooth stones, and that's where this one came from. So, if you're interested in this, go out and look around for these smooth stones. And if you can find some, these make great smoothing and polishing stones for your pottery. The other one I wanted to talk about is deer ribs. I've been using deer ribs to scrape my pottery for quite a few years. This year, a friend of mine in Montana collected deer and antelope ribs and sent me a whole box of them. So I've got a lot of these right now, but these are really easy to come by. If you spend time in the outdoors, you often come across deer carcasses or someplace where somebody butchered a deer that they shot. You might find roadkill on the side of the highway. You can also go to butcher shops, places where people bring wild game to be processed. So people will bring their deer to these places and they will chop it into all the normal cuts of meat, make hamburger, sausage from it, whatever. And then they have the carcass that they have to dispose of. And so you might be able to ask there and they can save these short rib bones for you. So there's several options for these. And like I said, these work great for scraping pottery. So this makes a great selection of five useful pottery tools that are made from natural materials. I hope this helps you. If you're interested in learning more about making your own pottery tools, I've got a great video about pookies which is my standby for a base mold and turntable for hand building pots. I'll put the link to that Pookie video right over here in case you're interested in learning more about that. Thanks for coming along with me today. I'll catch you next time.